Attention trainees, follow the markings on the floor to your X2 training and begin boarding now. Cockroaches, Grim Grinners, and TTA Travelers, you're in for a real treat, the WDW Kingdom Cast. You found yourself down the rabbit hole listening to our show. The WDW Kingdom Cast is your source for uncensored, unfiltered, and underrated Walt Disney World opinions, reviews, and a shot of news and happenings. Uncensored, or the red explicit warning on iTunes, means this show is not for the faint of heart, those with delicate sensibilities, easy offended, or those with little mouse ears. If at any time during your ride on the WDW Kingdom cast you become uncomfortable or offended, you can exit the show by using the stop button on any various media device you might be listening on. Bienvenidos. Favor de colocar sus efectos personales en el compartimiento debajo del asiento. Para su seguridad, permanezcan sentados con el cinturón de seguridad abrochado durante el vuelo y vigilen a los niños. Esperamos que disfruten su vuelo. Welcome to uh, episode 103 of the WDW Kingdom Cast. I'm Baron Von Vidnes, Duke of Hoagies, as always. I don't even have a new drop lined up, so I'm not even going to drop anything. Until I Let's just new. fucking drop a hoagie. <laughs> I, I dropped the hoagie earlier. <laughs> I'm not even. I hopefully you didn't taste it at that point. That would get a little strange, then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I've been taking these fish pills recently, mm-hmm. and that's been fucking up my system. Like, uh, you take some fucking nasty. It, it covers the stank of anything. Well, just put it that way. You gotta stay healthy, right? Yeah, but dude, it smells like chemicals. It can't be healthy. Well, it probably just smells like tuna. Well, on this economy. <laughs> You'll have you'll have that in a small town, Duke. You'll yeah. have a small town. Tonight we're uh, once again joined with a good friend of the show, uh, one successful, world-renowned, and uh, best-selling author, Leonard Kinsey. Hey guys, Jesus huh. Christ! I'm trying not to laugh I get myself <laughs> away. <laughs> oh, <fucking hell. laughs> uh, Shit. Good uh, to be back. A lot of titles these days. Huh? It, yeah. Worked hard for him, I'm sure. And it's uh, true. It uh, it shows. It definitely does show. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. So you, so we want to talk about when he reads some books. 
Uh, it's been out for a couple months now, but we're just finally getting around to our review. Uh, it how how to, to penny things. pinch and coupon deals by Leonard <laughs> Kinsey. Disney out of dime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a show or something? Or it's possible that it's a podcast. Or 101 or Disney Tips or whatever the hell. Or what is Mulan Jello's newest one is? Oh, that, that sounds like a good idea for a show, though. 101 Disney tips. Just the tips. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say just, <laughs> well, yeah. just the tips. I, I was going to say that could result in a lot of uh, a lot of eye irritation and potential facial mess, depending on how good that tip just was. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, that, uh, that will be episode 104, the WDW Gangbang, 100 Just the Tips. Do, don't we have an episode Ooh, called Just the Tip? <laughs> I'm not sure. If we don't, we can always do Just the Tip Part 2. The tip plus a little bit. Yeah, the, the, the tip plus shit. The, the uncut <laughs> tip, if you will. <laughs> Balls deep. <laughs> 101 balls deep tips <laughs> <laughs> to light your trip. <laughs> I think that's it right there. That should, uh, let's pen that down. Let's go ahead and make a notation in the notebook that doesn't exist, which doesn't lead us to ever creating new ideas or covering anything we've thought about prior. But, uh, so yeah, we've, uh, you, you were gracious enough to uh, send us some copies of, of the new book book and thank you kindly for that uh, you're welcome Which, we, should, we should uh we should throw the name out instead <laughs> of just calling it the book mm. so no we should just go through the whole episode and just call just it the, never book. The, it. the new book it's the new chapter yeah that book that that <laughs> book <laughs> uh, so halfs in the disney saboteurs that's saboteurs. it saboteurs tears uh it's, it's the new book it's the new book, and it's uh, an audio version. I listen to the audio version. I think you should go with the audio version because you got the different voices. <laughs> like I, uh, every time I think of Haps now, I couldn't read that without hearing that with that voice. Without and, hearing uh, my Haps voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, not been privy to the audio version. Do we have a Haps voice just to predicate what we're? Uh, is predicate the right word? I don't. Uh, let's see. You're the uh, fucking author here. You're yeah, supposed yeah, to be segment. like a veritable fucking dictionary. I'm trying yeah, to think yeah. of a, think of a line you can throw out real quick. Uh, uh, what about yeah. when it wasn't him when he when he got busted uh, for for uh, smoking weed up on the catwalk by uh, by the chillers <laughs> above the TT uh, on the TTA. Yeah. He uh, well, he did, I think he just says shit a lot. Uh, no, he says a uh, he says a. Uh, <laughs> Come on, man. There could be kids down there. I think that's like the house voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm still waiting for that CEO position to open up. It's kind of like a, a, I don't know, a little higher to, than my normal voice. I'm trying to load up a, a, uh, one of the chapters in the audiobook. I'll get to it. But, but anyway, uh, tell, so the, tell us what it's based on. Or, or, or not even what it's based on. What's it about? Let, let, so, let's, let, let's not even start there. Let's go a little bit prior to this, if you will. I'd like to conduct a in-depth interview with our friend sure. here. Uh, I found some very interesting things in the book and uh, some of these things will come in part two of the interview for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, where, where, where did you start here? Where, where was the original concept? What was your original thoughts? Was it a playing out of things that you yourself might have wanted to do? Yeah. I suggest. I mean, it, the, the way these things work, the way these books work, is it's kind of like anything I'm interested in, I'll just start like filing away in the back of my head as maybe this could be fun in a book, maybe this could be fun in a book. And, and eventually they all kind of, uh, I guess, come together into a story with characters. But so there's a lot of stuff I was, I was kind of thinking about recently. Um, you know, some of it has to do with continuation of themes from Arcane with Dust about how kind of the company's gone downhill as of late. Um, you know, all the shit that we used to like has, True story. has disappeared and, and stuff like that. So there's always that. Um, and uh, then there was a lot of the urban exploring stuff and people getting banned and things like that. So I kind of wanted to incorporate that into it. Um, and, you know, we, we know a lot of 
personalities, I guess we should say, in this mm. community. Um, and so I, I wanted someone who is kind of uh, like one of us, you know, maybe not the most responsible person in the world, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe a bit of a burnout. Um, I thought that'd be a kind of a fun main character. Um, and then the other thing that I was really getting interested in lately was uh, the dark net and bitcoins and this whole uh, mystery behind who created bitcoins because it's this you know this guy that no one has ever met in person and then he just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth basically i'm kind of convinced that the guy doesn't even exist it's just something that somebody made up like uh like i mean somebody obviously started it but i don't really think there's really a person well that's the thing so there's there's a that's one theory there's a bunch of different theories like you know, this it could have been the FBI. Like it could have been a whole group of people. It could aliens. have been, could have been aliens. Could have been, could have been Jesus. Could, could have been. been. It's exactly. Come back. No, so but you, you got to give them them bird coins. Yeah. So I, <laughs> so I actually was really into that, and then this darknet stuff, which is kind of the underbelly of the internet. That you got to use a special, you got to connect to it in a special way, and use a special browser. And when when you get there, there's not really like a Google or anything. You. You have to know the links for the sites, and uh, and there's a lot of really bad stuff there, like child porn and you know uh, terrorist stuff. But actually, it was originally designed by the government so that people like in China and stuff who couldn't access the regular internet could could uh, get on this and and uh, you know have basically a, a way to communicate with other people. But but it's been using it's being used for other stuff, and one of the big things it's being used for now is. Um, sites like Silk Road, which is, was in the news a lot, um, where you can buy drugs and uh, also pretty much anything illegal you can buy on this. It's like an eBay or Amazon. For Let's not use the word stuff. drugs. Let's just uh, party, attraction party enhancers. accessories. Yeah. Attraction enhancers. Let's roll with that, Gary. I think that's a fine term. But it's it's interesting because like, you know, it's just like eBay or Amazon. You go on there, vendors get feedback they get ratings um and it's for for people you know you don't have to go down basically a sketchy part of town and and buy from a dealer uh you can buy from some dude who's got five stars and 300 feedbacks and know that you're going to get exactly what he's saying you're going to get because i'd like reviews of my dealers before i buy yeah exactly well in in all reality i think that there is a point to be made there where Fuck it, I don't know. I've never been that strung out on anything to just ask some random person. Right. But it, on that note, like, I don't know how this dark net works. I haven't experimented with it very it, at all, period. Mm-hmm. To, is it a little bit more trustworthy? Or do the people yeah. that use it feel it's a little bit more trustworthy than it would be just... Yeah, that fucking dude on 54th and MLK, he's got the shit you need to talk to. Maybe you can end up getting a bag of peanuts right. if you get out Well, there, that's right? the thing. So, you know, so first of all, you know, just in general, I found that your run-of-the-mill neighborhood drug dealer is extraordinarily unreliable. I mean, they're just, they, they suck. You know, bad service, essentially. Um, oh, get, secondly, get, most of the time getting high on their own supply. Exactly. Yeah. It's secondly, not, it's not a good customer experience. You never know what you're getting um, from one time to another. You know, one time you get a bag of skunk weed, it and next time vary. you're getting medical grade. And yeah. and you never know. You, you, you buy an ounce, and you get home, and you weigh it, and it's actually, you know, three quarters. You're not going to bring a scale with you, you know. It's, but on Darknet, someone pulls that shit. Like, they say they got A-plus medical grade, and it's actually mids. They're going to get horrible reviews, and no one's going to order from them. So they're all very truthful. They all, you know, it's, it's, that's what makes, just like it does on eBay and Amazon, that's what makes the vendors be honest and, and uh, do what they say they're going to do. Before we get off that topic, what, what are the chances of those reviews being, let's say, falsified? just being set by the vendor themselves yeah that's possible i mean you can definitely um you know set up an account buy from yourself and uh and leave yourself a review but again just like on ebay or amazon there um the the site takes a cut takes a commission 
So that gets to be an expensive proposition. So you would, you, yeah, you you would lose some some of these precious bitcoins. Exactly. Yeah, so and you'd still get littered with bad reviews in between all the good ones. And all the right, bring the that's rating exactly down. right. Uh, that, that's pretty much what happens with our iTunes reviews, anyways. But <laughs> we still put out a quality product. I know? like to think that our bad reviews actually help boost our show. Yeah, that's how it is I with would Dark like to think Disney. so too. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that the more you really I'm not leave. encouraging anyone to give negative feedback because I don't want to do that. But on the same note, it's pretty goddamn to the point we went over that for the during the live show of just yep that's it you 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 called it as it is yep yeah, exactly <laughs> but so going back to to the dark net stuff i mean it's I, i've seen it I, i've checked it out once before and just to see what it was all about and mm-hmm. like i've looked up videos on youtube pretty much i haven't like set up a browser or anything and uh this shit exists, man. I mean, it's 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 real. Uh, it's existed for a long while, though, has it yeah. not? Uh, it, I've been totally unaware, and I, I thought I've heard of it, but I was like, "There's no way that's legit," because everybody would just be buying shit off there. Like, but I guess, like, I just wonder how it works. Like, if you were to buy a bag on there, like, you know, what's the chance of it showing up at your house and nothing happening? I guess the trick is if they ask you to sign for it, you just don't sign for it or something, or. Yeah, I mean, recently, so that's that's what's called a controlled delivery. So they'll have a postmaster dressed up as a, as a regular postman come and say you have to sign for this. And obviously you are not expecting anything you have to sign for, so um, you just don't sign for it, and then they take it away. So that's that. Um, al- alternately, you know, if you get something delivered and they're going to do a, a bust, you, the second you get it, you can write return to sender on it, for example. And then, you know, then you have plausible deniability. You're still going to get arrested. You're still going to go to court, but you're not going to get convicted, probably. Uh, in fact, that just happened recently. There was some IT dude who uh, who had ordered some stuff and, and did exactly that, and and uh, the case got dropped. So, uh, so that's that could work. But you know, supposedly that I don't know what the statistics are, but it's it's pretty. It's extraordinarily rare for that to happen, mainly because you know they're going after the dealers, not the not the users. Mm-hmm. Um, now the dealers have there have been uh, a few high profile dealer busts from from the dark net, and those are the guys who are huge, who are doing just massive amounts of volume. Uh, and and when when that happens, you know they're sending out these packages every day, thirty forty packages, and they're trying to spread them out across their area where they live in different blue drop boxes you know the blue usps boxes um yeah but eventually someone's going to take notice like hey all these packages are doing this and all it takes is one package to get returned because they put fake return addresses on them Mm -hmm. one package to get returned and and whoever is at that address to be like what the fuck is this and then bam they're going to be like i'm going to look at they're i'm going to look for every package that that looks like this is what the post inspector saying. Imagine getting that return to your dress by action and crack it open and take <laughs> yeah. it out. And Bingo! I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> looking around, and, fuck, I'll take this shit. Dude, I Fucking read one thing. Christmas. <laughs> I read one thing lately where, where a vendor accidentally sent a dude four pounds when he ordered a quarter. <laughs> Wowza! And the idiot got on Reddit and was Fucking. like, <laughs> he got on Reddit. And he was like blah 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 this happened uh what do i do and they're like why the hell are you posting on reddit first so the, thing you, you set up your own not shop. done so the vendor saw it yeah so the vendor saw it and was like hey you got to send this shit back or i'm like sending your all of your info to to the police and you like he's basically that, that's shady that is yeah. his own mistake we'll say yeah no the whole thing i mean so you can you know, shit, bad shit can happen, but it's it's pretty rare. And of course, now no one buys from that dude well, anymore. But yeah, no, but who would take the chance of going to the shipping four pounds? Yeah, exactly. Back Fuck to that. somebody. <laughs> That's what the guy said. He was like, "I'm not doing that. What are you crazy?" He's like, "You come drive here and pick it up." <laughs> Fuck that. I wouldn't even that. I- I would have just shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, I know. What yeah. uh, it, what was the time period that, that you had had wrote the novel in? W- was this a current um, day? A yeah, I remember I wrote the first chapter on the way back from Amsterdam uh, when I went, and that was I guess April of last year. 
So that's and, when and, I started writing it. <laughs> okay, as predicted in the novel, was, was it to be a current day? And forgive me, I, I don't remember if, if there were any specific dates or years um, yeah, it stated. Was suppo- yeah, it was supposed to have been like uh, basically current day as of when it was released. So there, was a, there were a few things that made that difficult and that I had to change. First of all, I had to change Bitcoin to Vertcoin. So I made, a, made up a, a, a fake currency because um, there's a lot of places in there where I reference like, well, this amount of Bitcoin could buy this amount of pot or this whatever. Sure. And, oh, we'll and be always the, variable. Yeah. And the, the Bitcoin price literally, I think in the course of me writing the book, went from $200 per Bitcoin to like $600 per Bitcoin. So all my numbers were just screwed up. So wow, I was like, that's fuck That's a lot this. of dollars so, to a Bitcoin. Yeah. So I was like, do they do they deal in bit cents? Uh, you can go down to I think I forget how many decimal places, but you can you can get it down to a very small amount. Yeah. Okay. You know, you can tip people and stuff. Um, but anyway, so I had to change it because of that to Vertcoin. And then uh, and then, you know, there's some other things like while I was writing it, they thought they discovered who the Satoshi Nakamoto guy was, the guy who created Bitcoin. They thought they'd found him. Um which, which would have, you know, really screwed up my whole backstory. Uh, so I, you know, changing it to Vertcoin was able to change the name of the creator into someone else. Another thing that happened is Silk Road got shut down. The fucking feds busted it. And, and so I couldn't Kabooey. make the, Yeah, so I couldn't make the website be Silk Road, so I had to make up my own Darknet site. Um, so there, I couldn't Google any of these websites. Exactly. All those websites in the book are fake, except for the legit ones like Coinbase and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it was supposed to be, you know, as of the day of that it was released. And there are some things that are that are fictionalized, like the um, I have the um, monorail have, has the uh, Duffy the movie rap on it. Uh, it's the uh, Duffy rail. Un- unfortunately, <laughs> I think as we stand right now, you are not that far off. I know. <laughs> That's the scary I, I, thing. I really don't think... Duffy that, really? that was one, That was one of the yeah. points where I was just, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you could totally see that happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but you know... I mean, it's it, going to have a little arm that waves in the wind or something <laughs> like that. Is there going to be a big sailor hat on top of right. the fucking thing? It, a, we're that close to a Duffy movie that <laughs> exactly. was intended intended for the Japanese market that will get marketed here. And unfortunately, as the fucking shitbag films are going right now, <laughs> where Frozen is just right. taking over everything. And we'll, uh, we'll touch on that if we have some time after the book, but... Holy Christ, that was, was terrifying to me because it is <laughs> that close to reality. There is not – that wasn't very far-fetched, dude, and I hope to God you're not right because at that point – We also want to give my if you, if you gave – yeah, if you gave anybody ideas there uh, – I know. I'm scared. We're going to put you in the Kingdom Cast stockade. Uh, I'll put myself in there, but uh... – <laughs> But yeah, the other time constraint was it, it actually features um, Charlie Walker from Hollow World, the main character from Hollow World, and it had to take place a certain amount of time after Hollow World. So, Hollow you know, World being a, a previous release on Bamboo Forest Publishing by Nick exactly. Poberski. Yep. Well, there's there's another guy too, Blaine McKinnon's the fake IDs he yep. used to get in the park. So, exactly. So what I kind of ended up doing was, you know, we're creating this whole Marvel esque universe that I call the Bamboo Universe. Whoa, yeah. the bamboo universe, eh? Yeah, I trademarked that shit. Wow. So, so it's kind of, you know, weaving in different books. And, you know, of course, it's it's a it's partially a marketing thing because people read one and they want to, you know, read the other if they like the character. But on the other hand, I also like having just these characters that you kind of get to know and you don't really have to fill in a whole backstory for them because um, they already have a backstory elsewhere. That's really convenient. It's almost like a shorthand. Um, I think... On a literary level, uh, writing and forgive me if I'm wrong here, but it, it, writing in a level of someone else's character, mm-hmm. like Nick's character, uh, he he had 
the best I know he created. Yep. What was that? What was that like? Was, was there uh, talk between you two in regards to how you would play him out, or did you just have enough background from the novel that he wrote that you knew how he was going to act? Um, a, a little bit of both. Uh, okay, you know, it's kind of it was kind of scary actually uh, writing because I didn't know what he was going to think about it once he read it and then if he s- thought it sucked then that was really going to screw up my my book um, sure and so between but I but you know of course I'd I'd read his book multiple times and I thought I knew the character and then there was also a space and time that where the character could have changed a little bit um, but uh, yeah I just wrote it the way that I thought he would have been happy with and then sent it to him and the editor, our editor Hugh Allison, and um, you know they definitely had some notes and some things I'd forgotten about the family dog, uh, for example, and so I had to had to put that the dog in, which is fine. I didn't realize that uh, he never his wife's name is Megan. He never calls her Meg. It's always Megan. Well, I didn't realize that. So I'd never noticed it. So there are little things like that that yeah that like definitely they they had input into. That I had just, uh, you know, forgotten or overlooked or didn't realize. But uh, it, by the final product, I mean me asking that was, yeah. There, there was a very synergistic, if that's even a fucking word, that it wasn't long after I had read Hollow World that I had the opportunity to uh, to read Haps, mm-hmm. and it was very much a, a, who I had met in that prior book sure. yep. a, and I think that led itself to that much more being an interesting read and haps that yes he was present no he was not the main character no he you know ha- had nothing really to do with things but his intentions were similar to what had been described in the first introduction of him to right. the bamboo ba- bamboonifers that's right. Yeah. Okay. No. And I felt like he was older in this one for some reason. Yeah, I mean, well, so he, the, he would have been by he, by he was a older. While. He was older, and you know, after all the shit he'd been through in Hollow World, you know, that kind of changed him throughout the book. You don't really get to see the repercussions of that in Hollow World because it kind of ends after all that happens. Um, and Nick's actually writing kind of a a story that happens between those. Um, that kind of tells how he ended up leaving Detroit and going to become uh, the head of security at Walt Disney World. But but the point is, you know, something had to have happened to make him leave his home in Detroit and come to Walt Disney World. So that what that's unsaid, and obviously the characters changed and grown because of that. But the good thing about Hollow World is, you know, it's a pretty long book, and Charlie Walker's on every page of it, and pretty much every page of it. You really get to know the guy. At least I felt like I knew that guy, that guy you know? Um, yeah. So that made it a lot easier to write for him. Uh, and and like I said, Nick Nick approved, and that was cool. Now and I this, think... Huh? Go is ahead. the sequel going to have the Veronica and Megan... I, I think that was their name, uh, lesbian scene that we didn't get. <laughs> they kept hinting at the whole time. There should be. I yeah, like, I know, right? Because you're, you're reading Hollow World, and you're like... So you got these two hot women, right? You got the head of the the FBI thing or whatever and then you got his wife and they're both supposed to be really hot yeah there needs to be a three way yeah definitely yeah, definitely where, where where, and when did that fall on the editing room floor and when will that be released I, I just cut yep yep <laughs> so you had mentioned earlier that it, I guess maybe in less words but Haps was kind of a conglomeration of various people you knew mm-hmm. and I think there certainly were actions that were based, not to throw spoilers out this early, but uh, certain situations and actions, and even from, let's just say, gross understanding of social media and stuff that's become popular that was not true Mm -hmm. or is true versus stuff that actually happened. What, uh, where was your first, like, development of that character? What, what, where were your first spawns in yourself goofing around as a, as a younger gentleman in well, pretty much like like the, Haps. the friends you saw fucking around yeah it's, uh, that that you knew was not a good idea or it 
It was so for for our kingdom of dust. I you know Blaine McKinnon is a lot. He's a lot like me, I guess. He he talks like me. He kind of has, you know, it's it's a it, it's a typical first you know fiction novel sort of thing. Um, it's written in first person. Um, so it, I, I I think people related him a lot more closely with me than than they would have otherwise. Even though he's not me, but it, but anyway, the similarities are there. With Hapst, I wanted to go totally different. I didn't want him to be me. I wanted him to be a, a completely different type of character. Um, and, and you know, like you just said, we know a lot of pretty interesting people. And uh, and I just thought this whole idea of, of being a Disney fan and having, you know, and getting into trouble with the law was such a weird, like, thing because... I don't know. It's like, it's actually like, uh, like Jim Hill is always going on about like this whole idea of the Disney bad boys is so ridiculous and it is ridiculous. Um, but it's also pretty funny. So that was kind of like the Genesis. And it also like, I wanted to play with very that. much exists. It <laughs> does. Yeah, it does. And it's, I think it's pretty funny. Like there is, there is humor in that situation. Um, and, and also just a sense of like a whole, what the fuckness? like, really? There's like, there's Disney bad boys, huh? Wow. Okay. So. It, 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 I thought it was interesting in that sense, like where you bring that up, where there are the Disney bad boys, quote unquote, who intentionally break the rules to break the rules. Mm-hmm. And then there are a lot of those people that just do it out of pure interest exactly. and curiosity. Weren't looking for trouble, wanted to avoid trouble at any point. Versus right. the opposite that were or are almost asking for trouble, you know, right. like just it, it, and I think Haps is kind of right in the middle of that. Where yeah. He seems like oblivious to it all, though. It just reminds me of like a nerdy stuff, like a stutter kid who's just real nerdy and like he's, he's oblivious to bitches hitting on him and stuff. And, right. And he yeah. does all this stuff and it's like. Yeah, he does it. It seems like he did it out of interest, but now it seems like more. It's like he just knows how to get to this stuff, and he he does it for the money so he can get weed. Like he has like. <laughs> right. uh, well, you're throwing some... spoilers. You're throwing so there's two parts. I mean, out there, Gary. On the one hand, he loves Disney and he loves the backstage stuff and he likes seeing it. Um, on the other hand, you know, p- half the reason why he goes backstage is to find a, a quiet place to smoke pot. Um, <laughs> like you know, he's he's on the roof of. Uh, of whatever building you know smoking up and, and he gets caught and then as the book progresses yeah he's he's getting offered um basically offered jobs to uh to go videotape backstage at, at these rides in exchange for vert coins so then he then he starts doing that so yeah so so before we give out spoilers so pretty much you have a uh, you have this kid haps who's getting messages from the dark net from an anonymous person that wants them to take videos and pictures of certain things in Walt Disney World, uh, the Progress City model, uh, Inside mm-hmm. Stitch's Great Escape, uh, yep. Carousel he Progress. Carousel Progress. Um, is he going anything over in Epcot or anything like that, or is it just a lot of? Um, yeah, well, the the final ones are Imagination, Mission Space, uh, oh, yeah. Leave a Legacy uh, things. Those are the those are the three over in Epcot. Yeah, and I don't even know about that. I don't. Even, if you didn't include the rest of the parks, that have been fine with me. Um, yeah, which that's I all that really exists, <laughs> anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other exactly. two, to be yeah. honest, here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> the other so, two feel like they're like owned by another company or something. I know it's exactly. name on there. But anyway. yeah. <laughs> do we do we now need to? Uh, have, have we gotten far enough just to uh, yeah, make we're a happy. pause? Yeah, and... we're, we're about the half an hour mark, 32 minute mark. I think at this point, if you don't want to know what happens for the rest of the book, go buy it on uh, uh, Amazon or BambooForestPublishing.com um, or wherever else they sell it at. Even on Audible, right, Gary? Yeah, yeah. The audiobook. Yeah. <laughs> the, the audiobook's awesome because you got the, you do the different voices through it. And, and like if you have a job where you're driving around, you can you can blow through it. I got through it in a couple of days, and it was it was awesome. I read the I read the paper. Is there a version of Hollywood or Hollow World that's audio version? Because I, I actually read Not that yet. one. It's, okay. that'll be coming out in, a, in about a month. 
but yeah. So you're going to have to do Charlie Walker's voice or it's not going to be legit? No, I didn't do it. I actually hired <laughs> someone to do that, luckily. But you get Sean Connery or now Morgan <laughs> Freeman should have done it. There you go. I didn't but get I do... paid for it. What the fuck is that about? But I, I do recommend the print version, though, because, you know, as as in uh, Our Kingdom of Dust, I do some things with the font and the layout and stuff. There's magazine articles, there's Navy or uh, Army briefs, and they're all kind of laid out differently and stuff. And uh, that's kind of fun. But, but yeah, in the audio book, you can actually hear how I, you know, think the characters talk, essentially, I guess. I mean, you got some codes for an audio book, too. Are we going to get into that? Um, yeah, yeah, we can get into that. You, you want to do that at the end? It, sure. Yeah, if if anyone wants to stick through things, because yeah. they're probably faggots and most of them haven't read it yet, so <laughs> then they should probably just hold off and uh, listen to some Chuck Maggioni. Gary, do you have that on tap? Just uh, for a little fucking 30-second interlude? I got this right now. I got to queue it up. That works. So, it, it, you, nah, you got to add the Chuck Maggioni in post at that point. I'll add it in. I'll add it in. Oh, shit. Anyway, but yeah, at this point, if you don't want to, if you don't want any spoilers for the for uh, you've been warned. Book, you've been warned. If you keep listening, then I don't know. Uh, either way, I mean, you're still not going to get the full story even with the spoilers that we we give. So it's still worth checking right. out if you if you go through it anyway. I mean, but at that point, so we move on past the point where uh, Haps is running around doing all these jobs and we don't ever really fi- figure out why but uh I, you know i forgot to touch it what's the name of his girlfriend monica now is that is this the one with the mo- like with like the mom too like yeah yeah, the yeah. Mom for- so yeah so he's living in her mom's mansion her mom's rich i pictured the mansion being one of those ones uh the oak what's it called? Gold Gold Oaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so uh so he's he's living in in her mansion she's divorced and uh and in order to stay there, the mom keeps making him have sex with her, which he does not like because she's pretty kind of, you know, gross. Beat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, the girlfriend doesn't know that. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's having sex with both of them. So he, he's not like the most, like, he's not the perfect guy. <laughs> not the most like, upstanding citizen, no, if you will. No. So, I mean, and there is a character arc there, obviously, where he kind of redeems himself. Uh, and, and then again, he's fucking around with what a eighteen, nineteen year old. Oh yes, yeah, so Chuck that's the other thing. No, no, no. She's underage. She's seventeen. There, there it is. Uh, yeah. I, I, so I, Monica I, is underage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's twenty something. Hit that fucking porno loop again, Gary. And I will throw the phone into the wall. Do it again. <laughs> One more time. One more. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But uh. So, oh, sorry, so you, Jeff Lang just signed on. Oh, wow, <laughs> that won't make it to the episode. <laughs> That's his fucking intro music. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out of the face back in the stash. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so, so, so he's bang, he's banging this chick's mom, and yep. he's got he's got like doesn't he have like a server rack and a vault with all this shit downstairs in the basement or something? Like I picture a huge mansion, yeah. but like the basement's like it's he's the like bad cave. On the cot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's got like a uh, he's got a server rack that's mining vert coins because that's how you can get yeah. vert coins for free is by basically running your server nonstop, chewing up a ton of electricity, yep. um, which he's not paying for. And then he's got like the secret, uh, basically the secret tunnel going from the basement to outside. It's like an escape tunnel almost. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. So that's he's just kind of freeloading in, in this in this place and basically paying paying for it with sex essentially. <laughs> Not a bad way to go about it. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. All terms aside, it, he's making bank and he's banging the chick and her mom. I mean, and sure. he's got a mansion. But of course, he spends all the vert coins on pot. So, that's, oh, well. again, not a bad way to go about it. Right. But it's readily available. I mean, what are you going to do? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's high quality puff. It, it, you know, <laughs> yeah, it can really take your mind off things. Now, does he have a special piece that he smokes out of? He smokes out of the uh, one of the those Iolite vaporizers. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and it's. It's funny, like, going to Amsterdam, you know, it was kind of eye-opening. I knew that there were a lot of different strains of pot, but I had no idea, like, that they were 
all these strains and they all did like different things and smell different stuff. You know, you go to Amsterdam, it's just this huge menu of like pot in every place that you go. Yeah. And I was just like, damn. And, you know, of course, you know, being, being in a regular place with regular dealers and stuff, they don't, t- they don't know any of that. It's like you get a bag of pot. And I'm not you, convinced. You, you, it, a, you have the wrong dealers. B, you've <laughs> never been to California. C, well, yeah. Am- Amsterdam owns California. So sure. my argument is invalid. So but... California and Colorado now are definitely uh, up to that. They're getting up to that level. But so you know, about Washington also yeah, recreational yeah. legal. Yeah. I, it, so it, regardless, my final point was my argument is invalid. But <laughs> it, yeah, but I, it, it, it's yeah. really come to that where you can literally pick exactly what you like. Yep. In in terms of what you well, enjoy, what it, no, you know, taste, it, feel, yeah, all of it. Uh, Let's head, see. I don't know body, if I could. If I go, I don't know if like, do you think people are just thinking about it when they get high? Like, oh, this one's supposed to be a head high. So no, 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 dude, it's way oh, past it's that. Feel it in my head. Like uh, this stuff that doesn't cause paranoia. Why wouldn't you make it all like that? Like I get paid taxes it, for because some shit. people don't get Sweet. paranoid with with that. They get there's a fine line between being energetic and thought like thinking a lot and being very creative, and then you go right over being push that a little plastered. further and you go paranoid and like freaking on out. the couch fucking yeah. wait, waiting for the knock on the door that will never happen yeah uh, or and there's also a difference between being you know having your whole body relax and having it relax so much that you can't get off the damn couch like so the, there's definitely a range of you know a lot of different things so um these yeah. these are pluses in terms of the use of marijuana in a medicinal sense, we'll speak sure. out here on the Kingdom Cast and and be pro this because it is yeah, something that is when you have the choice, it's a fantastic choice. Right. It, it, it's equivalent to drinking six beers <laughs> in three hours and you feel great, or you yeah. drink six shots of whatever liquor in an hour. And you feel like fucking garbage. Yep. It, it, it it's a uh, it's a very potent yet capable substance which people don't really understand yet. A I lot just, of I a just, lot I of mean. ignorant people don't get the fact that this is very much harnessable and yeah, quantifiable. You can know exactly what you're going to get and how it's going to make oh, you they, feel. They, they have they have shit now where uh, you can dose they they have dumbed it down from a plant to something where you can give it to ch- children sure. that are affected with autism uh and yeah those are like the high cbd strains they're not going to get high no they're just not at feel all their body they're going to relax essentially they're yeah. they're going to be down for that get, <laughs> get normal if you will right. and yeah. It's not getting stoned, and you can give it to a kid, and it's not going to fuck them up. It's more effective than Ritalin. It's more effective than any of the narcotics that are actually out there. But we're getting a little uh, far away from the subject, so we'll we'll come back back on the rails here. But these kind of things are, are, again, you know, this sort of thing that that interests me. I keep it in the back of my head. You know, I'm learning about all this stuff, not necessarily for any rhyme or reason, just because it interests me. Eventually, you know, it ends up making its way into the into the book. So it's it's an interesting cross section there because I guess at that point it haps as much as the other bamboo universe books Mm -hmm. are, are targeted at Disney folk. Yeah. Disney fans, people that will go to Disney at some point. I mean, even Dark Side of Disney would be something that, I don't know, not the first time traveler probably is going to pick up unless they're sure, already... Even if you just rate it on the plane on the way there. You know, yeah, in, yeah, unless they're like already goofy or, you know what I mean? Right. It, they, had, they had found a review or a recommendation and they're going to prep themselves as to how to treat the trip or whatnot. But mm-hmm. it, that's where I found the the cross pollination, if you will, sure. the cross pollination of yeah. popular culture and 
what uh, what uh, us Disney fans can relate to, and then yeah, it's nice reading. Let's say, something. let's say our Kingdom Cast fans that are exactly. I mean, we're. I think a lot of us are alcoholics, potheads. <laughs> You know, yeah. various yeah. other substance abusers. I think we even have some jugglers in the group. Wow. Oh, I, I or, hope or not. not. We're good. Or, or, or we we'll, we'll, we'll weed, Yeah, we'll weed those out as a courting. Yeah. But, but I mean, yeah, you're right. You know, there are pothead Disney fans. And is there a book for them out there? No, probably not. But Haps is, you know, about as close as it's going to come as far as them, you know, seeing some part of themselves in this Disney setting. Um, and uh, and again, you know, the, the other thing that, that really interests me, of course, is all the backstage stuff. And I was thinking about, you know, where are all these places that I haven't been backstage in um, that I would like to go backstage in? And so part of my research was talking to people who had been backstage at Carousel Progress and who had seen it, who had been up to the Progress City model and who'd seen it. And they sent me pictures and, and uh, diagrams and all this other cool stuff and some of that I've been putting, I've been dumping on the blog. Like I've been putting chapters from the book, along with the research pictures that I got. Mm. Um, so that was really interesting to me. Like I really, really enjoyed that. And I'd be writing a chapter, and I'd be on the phone with these people. Like, okay, so here's how I've got this going on this chapter. Is this right or not? And then they'd be telling me, yeah, that's right, or no, there's a hallway here that you got to go down. Well, so that was that was really cool. That's what I was gonna say I, too. It's nice reading a book where you you know, like when you're picturing in your head that it's laid out right. Yep. Where, where like sometimes you get these these books written by people that are fans of the parks and been going all their life, but like they're the way stuff's laid out just doesn't match up, and you're just like I know I know that's way overthinking it, but no man, it throws to, me out of it. When you're no, trying it, to it, picture it in your head, it just doesn't work. Yeah, it's exactly. not it's not overthinking it at all, Gary, because it, it was the exact opposite when I had read the book where there had been areas discussed which I hadn't seen yet I do know the layout of just through my own research outside mm-hmm. of seeing photos or blueprints and stuff it, it, I know how those things work I know how Martin's they Martin's vids man he's always got the layouts that, that nigga yep. he always has the inside he's got the good but it that was the one thing that it, I'm glad at that point Leonard you have started to kind of n- not at all out your sources, but somewhat out some of the source material where it's, that was one of the very poignant things that I picked up from, from reading the book through was a lot of this is way more true than you should know. (laughs) (laughs) Like, because I think I know you pretty well, and I think I know you, where you've been and, yeah. and what we, you know, collectively what we've seen and whatnot, yep. to the point where you had some inside info, and sure. definitely thanks to those people that provided because it is factual and it is, it does seem like that is the raw deal uh, from oh, yeah. the stuff that I have not seen, and from the stuff that I have seen, it certainly is. Uh, there's yeah. there's plenty of stuff in, uh, that that's mentioned or just silly shit where yep that's exactly what would need to happen to defeat that engineering or <laughs> right. get around that or see that and how you would take a look at that and and whatnot sure. yeah and it's important to me you know i i want to i want to stay true to the real thing and and again some of it came from former cast members who you know don't work there anymore and don't have any problem saying stuff and some of it came from current cast members who were obviously going to remain anonymous um but uh but i want i did want it to be as realistic as possible because i know after you know the success of dark side of disney that there i've heard from a lot of cast members who read that and so i knew if if i wrote this and there was something wrong with it I was going to get called out on it by a cast member. Like someone was going to email and be like, you really screwed this up. And I was going to feel like crap. So <laughs> um, th- there's, there, there is some leniency I would imagine mm-hmm. as an author. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, fiction after all. It is fiction. It's fiction yeah. in, in a real setting. So. Exactly. Yeah. Now did Adam, the make a cameo on this one? 
He does. He's he, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he made a cameo in Hollywood, Hollow yeah, World, yeah. and he made a he made a cameo in this one too. I think he's gonna make a cameo in in every uh, Bamboo Forest. So he's gonna be like the John Ratzenberger then of Bamboo Forest. <laughs> yes, books. exactly. Yep. He'll what be, he needs <laughs> to do is make a cameo back on on the Kingdom Cast. Yeah. Sorry, it's been a while. <laughs> He's uh, I mean, I don't mention him by name, but if you know Adam the Woo, you know who exactly who it is who's who's in there, yep. and uh, that will he will continue to be in Walt Disney World and my books until he is in Walt Disney World uh, in real life. So that right. is my uh, that's my he's a, good, he, he's a good guy. He's he's, he's got the uh, the street cred and the rapport as a person, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah, nicest but, uh, guy, nicest guy in the world. So. So so later on in the book, we start to explain the story what, of where... I I don't mean to cut you off, Gary, but what uh, Leonard had mentioned earlier in regards to changing font, changing the way things were written and printed became very apparent in... Ah, yeah. uh, shit, man. I, I'm sorry, this is a shitty interview, because I don't remember what chapter that was that we skipped out to... What was that? New Mexico? Yeah, there's oh, a uh, there's a military brief essentially from uh, yes from a guy who is uh, who is in this uh, this basically like big uh, data center and it's kind of he he was an air conditioning technician doing AVAC stuff for server rooms yeah. and it's kind of what he saw at this uh, this company and uh, and basically you know what he sees people think that he's completely insane and. He ends up getting discharged, but the whole thing's written in the same font and same layout that all of the, you know, at least all the military briefs I could see online, the CIA briefs and stuff it, were, were written in. Reading, it, we're, we're in the spoiler point of the episode, yep. so who gives a fuck, but yeah. reading through that the first time, I immediately was, okay, how the fuck? fuck does this relate <laughs> yeah so was i and, 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 and that anything? is that is a compliment to you because uh-huh. it, it it was something where it was just completely took me off guard like yeah I that's the chapter I where it goes off the rails this is going exactly I, I had an idea i thought it could go there that was just like a 30 second of my comprehension of what I was reading of just <laughs> um yeah I don't know but this has gotten weird so let's go <laughs> on and continue yeah that's where it veers off into almost like a sci-fi thing so it, you know the the idea being that again spoilers here yep. um, you've got this big data center back in uh, 1982 well essentially uh, it was when that chapter takes place and there uh this guy's been brought in to do set up additional cooling for an expansion of the data center, and what he finds, uh, he's brought in to monitor the temperatures and stuff for the when they turn on their big project. And what they turn on is uh, basically uh, Walt Disney's brain uh, in, in conscious. Yes, it's been every neuron has been uh, has been modeled uh, in in the computer, and so they basically flip the switch and. and turn him on so this is going and, off the assumption that he was frozen yeah so. well the, the idea is that that they uh he was frozen but not to revive him yeah but so that they could get a Cap- full scan capture. of his brain yeah. yeah like a full neuron by neuron scan of his mm. of his brain and then recreate that uh digitally and and then uh so that's that's what that chapter is when they bring him back to life essentially and you know how they're kind of tweaking all the different settings and you know, some shit's going wrong, and then essentially he's, you know, he's kind of back inside this computer. Now, does he smoke? I, does he smoke USB ports when he comes back? <laughs> I, <laughs> Non-filtered. I, I, I have to say, like when when the shit went down, since we are completely outside of fuck you spoilers here, uh-huh. when the shit went down in Carousel Progress, right? And it was mentioned. Yeah, it's a like very a young brief foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was okay, you know. At that point, maybe Haps is just a little bit too much like me. Where shit, that'd be great to see somebody like that, right? And you know, it's mentioned that it, it, the the strength of this person was awesome, right? 
Yeah, because he's able to pull the turntable to, to free Monica's so arm. Non- non-filters, it, it, man. I give you that it, 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 This is true. <laughs> a real man smokes non-filters. That's right. But then it flipped shortly after, I, I believe, is that is that the timeline uh, as it's written? The, that was told, and then it flips to the... Yeah, the, the, the military one comes about three quarters in. It's, it's yeah, maybe it, like... Five or six chapters after that, maybe more. Well, we skipped over. Remember the, the dead people and the smelters? Yeah. So there's a there's a whole bunch of stuff. So there's there's various chapters in here where you just don't know why I'm talking about them. For example, all the whole story about the guy who invented Vertcoin. Like, why is there a chapter in here about the guy who invented Vertcoin? There's a cha- another chapter about the dark man. Like, why is this in here? I think you and, need it and, to understand and, what you know. In the end, it all comes together like all these things well, tie together who, who did that why they did that exactly and... yeah so so it all makes sense in the end but uh but yeah that the the, the smellitzer story is is kind of a one-off uh story uh that kind of gives the backstory between Habst and charlie walker and how the relationship uh, formed. Yeah, that's what it was. um so that's that's why that chapter's in there uh just so you get a quick idea of how they met and uh and why they have the kind of interesting relationship they do but yeah the other things are just kind of randomly in there you read them and you're like what the fuck is this and I, I very much caught a what the fuck i did not connect between the two there was very fine lines that i mm-hmm. uh, i'm not sure you know uh, let's see where this goes right and absolute props to you i i do it, that's the reason i mention it like it it, it all lo- does come together it either. wasn't completely apparent and if it was completely apparent i'd tell you that the thing sucked like <laughs> you failed you know what i mean like at that point it, there was just enough of like what that chapter was it, it, with the with the 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 cooling specialist and the military style briefing like what was that really about, you know, right. until the bomb dropped and then it was fuck yeah, like <laughs> and literally right. fuck yeah. I, I think to not skip things, but A, it had led up to it constantly like, oh yeah, that thing's getting fucking burnt. That's great. That's getting blown up. This is fantastic. So right. it's kind of like the you, what you start to gather is the things that he's videotaping all of a sudden get destroyed within like the next day or two. So and that's was, yeah, that's the plot. Oh, he's, and he's videotaping worth, worthwhile exactly. destruction. So he's he's being asked to videotape all the attractions that we hate essentially, or that or that suck. That suck. That and, suck in uh, life. Yeah, and so what what ends up happening is all these ones that he's videotaping, something terrible ends up happening to him. Um, and, you know, and the, the idea behind that was what happened with the Tiki Room in, in Walt Disney World where it, it burned down. Conveniently, it didn't all burn down. It was just that one cr- critical animatronic of Iago. Fire, baby. And then they, yeah, and then they had to go back and refurb it and they put it back to the original version, which was great. So everyone was like, awesome, you know, Ghost of Walt burned it down you know maybe ghost of all it'll burn down mission space or you know the freaking we, we call that a lucky strike right so that so that's the idea um so that that actually starts happening and of course when they find out that Hapst has been videotaping these you know very shortly before they they get messed up they pin the blame on him um and uh and so it's his job to go and find out who's really been yeah. sabotaging him goes a little vigilante towards it yeah he does yeah, <laughs> hey, where uh, what what was the motivation for? I mean, at that point, we we're, we're already too in depth, so it doesn't really. Yeah, matter. Well, well, yeah, we're gonna blow it all out, man. I, I think yeah. you have to reveal the end to get anybody who's nah, I kind of want to get it. Once you reveal the end, <laughs> and what what's going on, you pretty much are gonna want to buy it when we when we reveal it. So we lay it all out, man. Get right into it. What. Right. uh why kill why kill the monorail? <laughs> Aside uh-huh. from the fact it's the most unreliable sort of transportation you can fucking find on Disney property right now. I think that's it, you know. So, yep. so my my problem with it is that it is the transportation of the future. Walt wanted it to be the ultimate model of reliability and cleanliness and safety and it has become the opposite of that. 
Um, Absolutely. And that pisses me off. And uh, I, I think it pisses off any any fan of, of Walt Disney himself and exactly. his vision uh, uh, of Epcot and the Florida project. That was just, there's no way that that should be shit and, on like it has been. And so to Gary's point, um, so, and like you just said, you know, who would be pissed off most by that? Well, it would be Walt Disney. And so who is the person who is having it destructed? Well, it is, uh, it is Walt Disney. Mm-hmm. And, and so that is the, uh, the kind of the big, the big reveal is that, um, Walt and Roy have, uh, have come back to life. Their brains are, uh, in, you know, this server complex, uh, not too far away and their bodies are, you know, basically next, next, next gen animatronics. And, uh, and so that they're back as physical, real people. And, so, the, uh, so they're running around the parks, <laughs> running around, uh, yeah, to get blowing these, shit up, getting these videos of shit and then blowing it up. I mean, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so they, there, it, Walt is destroying the shit that he doesn't like, basically. There was a, uh, as I was finishing the book and, and, and reading the, the whole circle of it where I did, I caught a feel of Cory Doctorow's mm-hmm. down there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, it just, we've advanced that far, which is, it was really fucking rad and compliments to you again and, and compliments to Cory Doctorow. I would love to get him on the show at some point, but it was far out enough that A, it makes sense completely. Mm-hmm. B, relates to what is going on right now. Yeah. And I think C doesn't even need to be mentioned other than the fact that I think the majority of people listening to this would love to see something like that happen. So, yeah, so for, especially yeah. for all the bitching like in the communities about all the new shit that sucks and the shit that's been ruined like this book is pretty much Walt coming back uh, in a form that you you don't even realize with a great and furious vengeance yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think it's dude you know what it would be awesome the concept art if somebody made like the, a concept art of like this robotic mm-hmm. version of Walt and like it's kind of like um I mean, I don't know how uh, you'd, you'd see. You, I, I think you'd see a little bit of the epic Mickey kind of just. Well, it's almost like perf- a, perfect destruction in sense of. Hmm. I would almost want like a like like a shot where like uh, like he's he's wearing like uh, like an older like jacket or something, but like the middle's exposed and it's just like you can see like servos, fiber optics, and yeah, and yeah, fiber optics and stuff, and then like. You, just underneath the neck, it's kind of like Carousel Progress, John. Where like you, when the neck, you can see the neck <laughs> separating from the right. fucking, uh, uh, you know. And that would be that would that would make an awesome fucking piece of art, or even a fucking tattoo, like a fucking yeah. Walt, robotic yeah, Walt but... and Roy come back and fucking Walt smoking an e cig now because sure. you know That's he's he's vaping now. It's the future. He, he, he gets he gets no reason to smoke a regular smoke. It, he, they do drink in the end. Oh yeah, that's right. But uh, but actually, so that was another thing that that had influenced me that I found very interesting. There's something called the 2045 project, which is being led by this Russian billionaire, and his idea is that by 2045, um, we'll essentially have reached this goal of what I talk about in the book, where um, people are living as avatars in the computer. Their entire mind has been transferred into the computer. And now they are living virtually uh, as avatars, essentially. Awesome. Um, but there's a series of stages that progress to that. And this Walt and Roy animatronic is probably like third or fourth stage, um, which would set it 20 years from now, probably. Mm. Um, but I figured if the Disney company had continued on with all the great minds they had and put their mind to a secret project like this and devoted as much effort as they could to it, they would... You know, that wouldn't be, be far off at all. Exactly. Let, uh, let alone you compare that to it, how things are going right now, really, in the parks. Yeah. And 20, 20 some years from now, a, this would be something that Walt himself would show up and fucking roll heads over. Yeah. He, he would do that yeah. right now. I, yeah. I, I, you I know, do believe that. I agree, too. In the book, 
really is it's a lot more critical of the company and the parks than I think our kingdom of dust was um, but not in a preachy way just kind of in a you know I'm I'm showing it rather than Realistic. saying it type of way yeah sure yeah so uh, uh, and you know there is a there is a character in there who's very much uh, his name is a uh, Bill Ivers uh, and, and you know so you might <laughs> deduce who that might uh, might have some who've been influenced by uh, but uh, and you know the guy's a real dick so uh you know, yeah, I definitely, I definitely poke some a lot of jabs. At, <laughs> definitely a lot of jabs at the company and current management in, now, in this in this book. Now, there's a chapter too, also about um, a video that Walt left behind when he oh, was yeah. dead. Yeah, let's, let's go into that because that was like the first time I've ever heard that before. And you said that was based off like some rumor or something like that. It like, is. I heard the story from Ron Schneider first. He had told me there's this urban legend. That, uh, that essentially, after Walt died, um, his version of it was all these. He brought they brought in all the most important people from from the company and sat them around a, a boardroom, and um, and each one of them had a folder in front of them. And the folder that when they opened it, it had uh, you know here's what you're going to be doing for the next ten years. It was from Walt, mm-hmm. so he'd had it all planned out. Like you're, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. So I thought that was really cool. And well, we need to make them folders and sell them to TPC because you know they'd <laughs> fucking buy them. Or they're, exactly. they're making them right now. But anyway. Um, yeah, after hearing this, they're fucking putting them on the well, printing That press. shit will be on there tomorrow. <laughs> so, I, so I started researching this, and it turns out there are actually like a bunch of different var- variations of this same room. room. One, of them's on I- or one of them's on Snopes. Um, and uh, and I, there were some interviews with people, and I actually asked Rolly about it like, and to see what he, he had to say about it. So they're, they're all basically a lot of different things. So I kind of uh, jazzed up this this urban legend, combined a few of the different things I'd heard, and then kind of added you know more details to it. And you, uh, wait, are you are you able to, or would you like to discuss it, any things that you did hear? Because it yeah that I want to hear con- this, that, that concept <laughs> that concept in general sounds very much like Walt. Where it does so. The, it, the, the, the Sorry, idea that I like I can't be here right but, but listen this is where this needs to go I mean this is that that stands with me on the the sense of him explaining Epcot on the ceiling tiles right. of his hospital bed and yeah there had to be some kind of plan man just well, the, this is what's going to happen and and at that point doling out roles to each of his guys with yeah. a folder like you know Dick, I, I New- Dick Nunes you're going to be the guy that fucking makes a wave machine right well <laughs> <laughs> you know I I would have thought that too and um and what I learned from talking to you know a few different people was that unfortunately that wasn't the case uh, basically Walt didn't he didn't ever think about himself dying you know the whole thing at the end that that really happened very quickly um and he it was all in his head but you know he just didn't think about it he thought he was going to be around for forever keep to keep doing his thing um and uh and the other thing that the point that roly made was that you know if he had done that then he did a really bad job of it because you know look what happened to, to the company after he he left you know oh, all the, the, plans. Flor- the Florida project and, right you know, yeah. right so and uh, you know that made sense to me but it doesn't uh, doesn't get in the way of a good urban legend and a, and a good story I so think I somebody should make a it. hoax video man that'd be awesome yeah because in the, the book in the book essentially he sits these people down in in a theater and assigned seats. And then there's a, a film of him where he's actually pointing to the each person and talking to them because um, he knows you know where they're going to be sitting. So he's filmed himself pointing and talking. Because um, I think he totally would have done that. He would have done it in a, you know theatrical. If, if, he, if he yeah, if he knew that that would be the case, I I agree with you in the sense that I don't think he realized his time was that limited. Yeah. Or or ever did understand that. And if he had knowing the backing that he had and knowing the progress that he'd already made in in Florida etc there would have been 
dedicated lines of forward movement per yeah. person. And and instead, you know, Roy picked up as much slack as he could, and he got everything open. He got he did a damn, open. Damn and then good he died. job. Yeah. Damn, damn good fucking job. He did. He did. Yeah. So, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's definitely an urban legend, but it's sure it's a fun urban legend. So that's yeah, I'd, well, I'd rather, I'd rather believe in it. And, yeah. And, when I heard it, I was like, you know, I, I don't think this is true. But I'm, it's like, I'm just going to pretend like it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather believe it for sure. Yeah. And then I'm like, I just want to see this fucking video now. Fuck. <laughs> that that to me was the just most captivating point of the book of just Walt would be fucking vengeful yeah. if he if he was around today, if he had the opportunity to just boom show up, yep. see what what's going on in Florida right now. What happened to his Florida project? I don't think he'd so much go after the people that that made the Florida project what it is because it started off on the best they could do, sure. you know, the, the best that they could make happen. Without yeah, with him. no regards for for money. I mean, they blew a shit ton on Epcot with you know oh, not even really lar- knowing largest construction project in the world. Yeah. It, 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 and they tried, you know, they just didn't have him. And without right. him, there there's a a constant slack gear, something skipping a tooth constantly. And that to me was just, it, it rings true right now more than ever, where if he yes. were to show up or his conscience was to show up, heads would fucking roll <laughs> yeah. and this shit like i kid you not i do believe this and people love to fucking hate and or play against it where if walt was alive and if walt was uh, you know blah 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 i really do think that if walt had a chance to play his card right now shit would be demolitioned it would left, immediately left, left and right Yes. You would see a full clearing house yeah. of current management. Most of the cast members would be fucking fired. Yep. And there would just be, yeah, we're shut down for six to eight months. Sorry, folks. The moose out front should have told you. And yeah. yeah, that would be that. And it, would it, be, it would be the new... What when, shit, <laughs> when, when, when shit opens... It's going to be fantastic. Well, even yeah. if he did that, I mean, everybody, it would be all over the news, so the hype for it would be so much bigger. You could actually be getting, you know, if just Disneyland opened and it wasn't like Walt Disney's Disneyland, is just the way they've always sold it on TV back in the 50s and stuff, you know, the hype wouldn't have been as big for it. <clears throat> you know, imagine if he started doing a TV series again for for, <laughs> for Progress City and, and – uh, I don't know what he would want to call it if he would want. To call I'm not. It. Uh, Progress City. What, Progress City would happen, I think, just due to the amount of space that is still available in Florida, sure. where it, it, it's not. They are still have yet to be constrained by size. They, they what like I to play that a lot of the, they're like, oh, but you know, a third of the land's devoted to wildlife, so we're actually well, not it, much room now. What <laughs> I think it, it's just that though, Gary, that they've devoted too much of their resources or means to shit that they obviously haven't because if you've been around lately the shit's totally overgrown looks nasty if Walt, not, come, if Walt comes back is he putting a swamp ride in or no <laughs> I tell you what he probably would do would be run them goddamn Sasagula river boats all the way down past Golden Oaks and uh, right to the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Nice. That was the original plan. Yeah. But I also think he would probably just uh, literally shit is shut down. Yeah, and and, you know... It's done. And And it would be... It would be blown up and something new and great would be in its place. Not Not in a year, not in, you know, three years, but probably in two to three months. You know, it, it, oh, a bang that, bang situation. That's much how like he operated. You know, Disneyland was 
I'll exactly. hire the guys that can get it done and get it done now. Yep. And they're going to meet their deadlines. And when they don't, they're going to have hell to pay. Yeah. Where it now three it's years just, for a mine train ride type crap. Oh, yeah. which is just <laughs> piss poor. Yeah. And, Yep. I think I think about that a lot because it's it's. Oh, Lily, Lily lived to, to 1997. I mean, Walt could have if Walt would have made it at least the 80s or even the mid 70s. Man, who knows how it would have ended up? Mm-hmm. Uh, if we would have had a Progress City uh, in one form or another. We would have had a oh yeah yeah a city uh-huh. yep. in Florida. Uh, Absolutely. It would would have, would have been a city first. Magic Kingdom second. Yep, and that's that. And that's a fu- shit. Could you imagine him walking in, as the book says, <laughs> walking into the situation right now? I yeah. think at that point, nothing against you, but I think you were pretty conservative in I terms was, of yeah. what he would have blown up <laughs> and what would have happened because <laughs> the. Uh, Shit, man. Uh, at that point, stuff like the monorail, which were on all spoilers out, that was one of the last that was targeted. Yep. That would have uh, would have never stood. Period. Yeah. yeah uh, the, uh, the monorail meets a glorious end. Uh, I, I always like the image in my head of the monorail flying through the air. Oh, just um, dive bombing. Yeah, Whoa. so that's that's the the image that I had when I was writing that scene. It just jumping the track and just kind of flying through the air. How did Mission Space come apart again? Didn't they like unbolt the uh, bulkheads or something like that on the? Uh, yeah, on the, you know, uh, I actually, well, they they uh, used like an acetylene torch to weaken the the links, and I, you know, I watched all the videos of how those things worked and looked at some you know blueprints and stuff, and and yeah, they they those. That's a lot of force that are put on those things. So if you kind of cut into those those beams, just um, enough, just enough to when it hits that peak amount of force, those things go flying off. Yeah, they're going right through the roof. We here at the Kingdom Cast do not endorse any type of <laughs> terroristic, no, uh, cutting, torching, bombing, jihad. It, no, it's not necessary. This is purely a fiction. Yeah, fictional discussion, but it, it it's fun it to think can't, about. Though. It can't help but be ignored. Well, I mean, well, really, we didn't like, bring the idea. I mean, the 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 one the the attraction catching on fire and then getting the old attraction back. Yeah, it's that a, was that was that really happened. Yeah, it really happened. So I mean, <laughs> it's not it's, it wasn't wishful thinking. It's just that's <laughs> maybe it was, and, and if it was, whoever you know, whoever did it. Yeah, Thank fucking you. yeah, you know. Maybe and that's what I always it's thought. It's like, it's maybe it's it was an inside job. They did it so they could get the insurance money, you know, to get set on fire. They know they want to change it. They don't want to spring the money to refurb this thing. So what do they do? Someone sets it on fire. They get the insurance payment. They get the refurb it without having to dive into their budget. The now, old whoopsie. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, see, I was hoping when I was down there and uh, uh, one of the light bulbs on fucking uh, Astro Orbiter caught on fire or something like that. And I, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, hear, I saw it on Twitter or something. I was like, uh, at the uh, the Boardwalk Resort or something. I'm like, here we go again, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just making a comeback. <clears throat> That's awesome. But, so, uh, now, it, so now, if it happens again, they're gonna try tracing it back to your book and saying that you live in your book. Yeah, well, that'll be your fault anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all my fault. It's always my fault. Pretty, pretty much is. Yeah, yeah pretty I, much. I, I would agree with that. Um, <laughs> the, it, where can we find the book? The The book is on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble. You can get it in paperback there. You can get a signed copy from uh, the Bamboo Forest store, bambooforestpublishing.com. Can I buy it on the dark net? Actually, you can, you can uh, hey, what's use bitcoins to buy Bitco- it. Yeah, um, what's the cost on I think Bitcoin? I think it's bitbooks.com. Um, and they, you know, it's the same price. It's just in bitcoins. Um, so if the you, director's cut should come with like a with like a gram of fucking uh, some good shit in there, <laughs> some stank, yeah, some oh. some loud, a gram yeah. of loud, as the kids <laughs> say these days. But uh, but yeah, if you got some leftover Bitcoin after shopping on Darknet, you can go pick up a copy there. Um, and like Gary said, the audiobook's available. That's on Audible or iTunes or you know. But that's wherever. been read by some hack and <laughs> some hack. Yeah. How about Marty Scar's in that? 
Yeah, yeah, he is. yeah, he is. Uh, but Marty Scalar and some other hack. And then, uh, and then the ebooks uh, everywhere. You can get that all, anywhere you get ebooks. So it is very, very much worth reading. I, very Kingdom Cast esque as yeah, far definitely. as just kind of just hating what's going on right now with the company. And I oh, know it's almost like an outlet. Like I was reading this, I'm like, yeah. Like when you're like, right. blue, you know, the <laughs> fucking Mission Space blue part. I, I might head hard on. <laughs> you got a semi. Yeah. But it, that was one thing I, I wanted to uh, to touch on before we end, if you got the moment or two. Sure. What are your feelings in regards to the generally accepted rumor that Maelstrom's going to disappear and will become a frozen attraction? Uh, I think it's ridiculous. It did, I mean, you're basically taking the concept of World Showcase and just throwing it right out the window. Um, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. See, you know some, that, some fight that Grand Fiesta Tour already did that, but it's still showcasing. You're still in Mexico, though. And the movie was based on oh, promoting And fight. going yeah, and the movie was in Tricabia. South America. Exactly. <laughs> Which so isn't it, Mexico, but still. <laughs> no, but it, it fits, you know, the, it's, it's still, you're not turning it into a fictional country. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the Norway ride, it's, it's always been... I always thought the queue sucked ass in that ride. That is the worst well, queue not, when you're walking existing. around with that that fucking wall. Why did they put that wall up there where you can't see over it? You know, you I don't know. I always felt very claustrophobic uh, it, in the it, first place. It's, it's all about it's, the reveal. Yeah, for the big fucking <laughs> mural. Well, I want to see the mural from the yeah, second well, I walk I in. Know, so, it but be. but anyway, I mean, it did, look the the ride needs a refurb. The, it, definitely. Should it be frozen? Absolutely not. It should be Norway. Norway. Stave, Stave Church is the first sign. That shit's. They wouldn't think twice. It's done. That, in there. that pissed it's me done. off. I loved that so much as a kid. So I, I actually would go in there and and like hand copy the runes on the rune stones, mm-hmm. and then go to the library and try to like you know research stuff so I could figure out what they said. Like to me, that sort of thing was like just really fucking cool. And um, you know, frozen is not you know there's not at all there's just no depth there's nothing more to you know you get excited about it and you want to go home and and delve deeper into the history of norway and stuff there's no delve deeper from frozen it's frozen there's the one thing that's all you get well you might want to sing some karaoke if you're a fucking faggot (laughs) i just there's it's not that spirit of exploration and discovery and learning new things about about new places that epcot was built on and founded on and that really, yeah, it does piss me off. Yeah, it, it's it just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't fit. You got a whole fucking movie park, and people are yeah. like, "Well, so what if it doesn't fit?" Well, well, that means everything. It's like you know, people just you don't yeah. put these character attractions in the fucking. No, that's the beginning of the end for the country. It I is. Think. It is definitely. Uh, it, it would only follow suit as we've already seen the end of Future World. It's yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, we always say, well, at least we still have World Showcase, and that's... That's what that's, I always said. For, yeah, we've all said yeah. that for a while. No, nope, nope, this is fun. it. This is it, gentlemen. We've, uh, this, the Stave this Church is the- was the first fucking deal for me. Like, I used to go on that Stave Church all the time and drink and just look at the Vikings, and I've seen mm-hmm. them a thousand times, but it was so fucking cool. Yep. And now, like, I go in there, and I'm like, this sucks. Like, yeah. it's... Uh, who gives a fuck? And he just walks it's on. A, yeah. So hey, hey, here's a movie that's not based on Norway, but it's kind of like that northern area of the map, and uh, you know, it's kind of there's something looks like a stave church in there, and there's some place, some fantasy place called Arendelle, which is kind of based on uh, Scandinavian areas and, or in Norway and stuff, but not really. Fuck it, let's just uh, we'll just shoehorn this shit right in here. <laughs> you know, yeah. The fuck. And and you know, if they the other thing that bothers me is. If they'd had the confidence in that movie to do a real overlay, you know, a few months before it was released to get people excited about it and, you know, to do this, that, then I'd be like, well, all right, I get it from a marketing perspective. But we're talking, what, nearly, it'll be nearly a year after the movie's going to be released that they're even doing anything major there. Just, I mean, just catching up. It's, just that's catching just up. stupid. And by the time it's all said and done, kids are going to have moved on to the next thing. It's just this. That's so dumb. What, what is the next thing, though? 
Well, that's the that point. Is, they don't have any confidence in their in their product to say what that is. You know, back in the day, Walt Disney, he would be like, well, here's our next big thing. Yeah. And he'd pimp the crap out of it. He'd stick it in the parks. He'd do something for it. You know, they're not doing it, that. It'd Everything's be, like it'd be reaction sold now. Before it was released, was the Sleeping Beauty's cash yeah. that like there before the movie came out, or was that Cinderella? No, it was definitely one of the Cinderellas. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. If you back and check. But the point <laughs> is, they're 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 in reaction mode. They're not, you know, they're not in innovation mode, and it's it just like I said. Okay. By the time they get anything in there, it'll be old news already. R- reaction mode. Yep. Let, uh, we, we'll take a three-part vote. Oh yeah, Mike, hold on. Sleeping, Bu- Sleeping Beauty came out in 1959, and the castle opened what 55. Huh. Is it, like, sleep- yeah. is it even Sleeping Beauty's castle? Or Mike was completely yeah, fucking. No, out. it is. Because right. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking now, and the movie came out in '59, and I'm like, well, uh, it, it took it took a while back then for yep. these people to draw these things by hand. Anyway, continue with. I just fucking derailed whatever thought you were on. No, it's all right. We're in reactionary mode. Oh, okay. So the reaction to Michael Jackson passing was to reinstate Captain EO. Yep. I love it. I'm happy for it. Uh, Captain EO was, was a great thing. We, we have since lost Robin Williams. Yep. Our, what's, what's the vote on reinstating a timekeeper attraction. Ah. See, the only thing, the reason I see that would not happen is because the fucking Honey, I Shrunk the Audience Theater would, could just be so easily retrofitted. They're not going to rip out all that monster stuff to bring a 360 theater back. In the- According to our legacy of, of belief, Martin Smith, they had not retrofitted most of that. Most of that was merely a, a shell to... Right. Which is what they did with Imagination. They just kind of covered up the tracks with plywood, essentially. Yeah, and just shoot, shoehorn things in. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, are, are we for a return of the Timekeeper? Are we against it? Should it belong in a, uh, a different area at that point? Thoughts? I'll take it right there. I'll bring it back right there. I'll they'll probably it. put it, if they do it, they'll probably put it in the Chinese theater. <laughs> <laughs> just because it wouldn't make any sense, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, do the, Chi- well, but do dude, the Chinese make any sense as it stands, anyways? Well, yeah, we've all seen Nara Dreamland, so no, nah, not really. <laughs> but yeah, that would, I think that would be great. You know, I'd, I'll take it. I'll take it where I can get it. You know, I mean, uh, that was a great attraction. I will stand steadfast, and uh, that was an amazing creation. It was, it was cool. I wasn't crazy about it just because I didn't like like stand in the watch the film. Like I always felt like I was missing something. But well, you I can't. Like, you cannot sit on the floor. His studies have shown that time travel is not possible if you're sitting on the floor. Right. <laughs> it blows the fuck out of Monsters Inc. Laugh floor. It's for damn sure. I, I didn't hate it. I didn't dislike it. It just wasn't one of those things that I was like, yeah, you know, like I don't feel as passionate about it as I do like Carousel Progress or something. I I do, and. It, I'm not. I won't fucking bend my words there. The fact that it was involving of Jules Verne, H.G. Wells yeah. was very much what I thought Walt enjoyed himself as far as tomorrow would be. And yeah, it, if we brought it back exactly how it was, it would need some updates, some film updates and stuff like that. But narration updates, not really. And I'd like to see that. I really would. I, I think it would be a very fine testament to, uh, to Robin Williams' career with Disney. Love- oh, he's got that. He's got his picture up in imagination. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, I agree with you, Ron. I think that'd be cool. I, I think I think it would be neat if they updated the film. That's cool with me, but. I could watch that narration and watch that Martin Smith video time and time again. And it is funny. And I've talked to people that disagree with the fact that, like, Aladdin, was, they will say Aladdin was a shitty movie because they let Robin Williams run with, just I mean, let him run. It was mm-hmm. no Shazam. 
in terms of genie movies. But. Sure, but he wasn't a basketball player, <laughs> no. you know. The Aladdin's, Aladdin's were the only straight to DVD movies, like sequels, that like actually watched and were good. Well, the That's first because. one, it, it, people criticized because they let Robin Williams run, and yeah. he made a lot of timely and poignant references that might not necessarily be transcended to you know whatever audience you're playing it for but i don't see that with the timekeeper with uh, with the timekeeper it was very much just what i had always seen in disney and sci-fi of just this is not possible and this is a great look into the future and Mm -hmm. i can only to tie a lot of that stuff in, especially like Jules Verne. Like Jules Verne used to be in a lot of shit back in Disney. Fuck, yeah. in the huge. Day, now he's not huge. in there. He's in Horizons. Yeah, yeah. And, and now it's. I don't think there's a single thing that twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it, I think it would. I, I I think they should pay their if they're gonna if they were gonna do it for Michael Jackson, they should do it for Robin Williams. He he gave them more as a company than Michael yeah. Jackson did. And yep. I'll hold on that and we'll yeah, I mean, see. I, we'll see. But I'd be down for it. Like I said, maybe all it needs is that is that Walt Lightning in there, man. Take care of that monster <laughs> shit. Just zap it. Yeah, yeah fuck it. <laughs> Fix it. Dude, fucking Walt just goes yeah, in there and flicks more, his butt on the stage and sets the whole fucking thing on fire. More than one MILF has been tasered in their life, you know. There's plenty <laughs> of YouTube videos you can see that. Well, I think at that point it's going to wrap it up for us tonight. So definitely check out Haps and the Disney Saboteurs. Oh, wait, photo. so we got we to gotta do the contest. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. okay, so so the, the contest is I've got some free codes for uh, downloads on audible.com of the audiobook. And uh, and so if you would like to uh, to get to win a free code, the contest is. And we did something similar to this way way back in the day when when I was first doing stuff for Dark Side Disney with you guys. Um, basically, send in your your uh, Dark Side pictures um, to the to the Kingdom Cast. Girls of Kingdom Cast pics are always appreciated. Uh, and yeah, then, www uh, Kingdom Cast at gmail dot com. You can send them, or you can just message me on uh, if you, if I got you on Facebook, just send them to me in a direct message or or the brand. No, 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 direct <laughs> message is right, anywhere. No, no. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll pick the top three, and those people will get a will get a free download of the audiobook. Um, obviously, nothing that uh, no I don't no pictures of you know the parks being harmed in any way uh, yeah. or defaced or any of that. But just you guys know what we're looking for. Um, uh, good old fun Kingdom Cast. Uh, it's, just, it's how I I got famous. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Went platinum with that shit. You got some swag. So uh, I, I I met the Dream Finder. I met yeah, Leonard Kinsey. That's right. I met I met Hooten Chief. It's true. And that was a that was a great it, picture. It, it paid off. So uh, you guys want to want to. Uh, Maybe wait an episode or two episodes, or what do you want to do for it when we announce the you announce the results? Well, the, well, the rate we're going now is about a show a month, so I think we'll okay. have about we'll probably next have enough time. Yeah, next episode of the when we well, yeah next episode of the episode after, you know, when we get a couple submissions in and we'll throw them up there, you know, and then, you know, I don't know, yeah, all we'll, right, we'll take we'll take a pick and then you know we'll throw out some codes for for the book. Yep, and you can download that shit for free and check yep. it out. So hey, if if it's worthwhile, you might be able to come on the show, have hey. have a say. Uh, dare I dare I suggest have a beer with any one of the hosts in various locations, depending on where you're located. I don't know. After you had that un, that carbonated seltzer water, I don't know if you uh, that that really after that. yeah. Well, that really fucked me up. So, <laughs> well, until next time, see ya. Thanks, guys.